Yo, 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 let me get a piece of this. We are here for our Survivor Series review. I'm here to tell you. Show's okay. Show was, uh, okay for a basic, like, if you had a special and it was at least four hours long, that would be a point to watch the show. I don't give a damn that much of the aspect of Survivor Series. That sounds harsh. Because the best matches in the show were heel against heel or babyface between babyface. And the only dynamic that I actually enjoyed the show was the Street Profits against the New Day. That was a fine match. Average selling. That went nowhere. We had mockery spots and nothing changed. The thing that upsets me more whenever people are like, oh my god, this is such a good show. When I put it in, dull commentary to just make it short and sweet. No personality at all, or any of their major gripes that could have made the show a bit better. And then they want to come around and just say that Raw, like Raw and SmackDown sucks, even though your pay per views are barely delivering. And yes, you can call it on the Thunderdome sucking, you can call it on pandemic limiting attendance wise, and at least this is a different change to pace than having your freaking pay per views in a practice facility, a training facility for the last. Mm, like, I think, eight, like, I think five months? I think it was six months before they moved to the Thunderdome. And, uh, damn. We moved up with the, we're not gonna go over the dual brand battle royal, short and sweet, and there's one. Didn't know why he had to win a battle royale, even though he's a Money in the Bank briefcase winner. I guess that's another, like, fake achievement that makes no damn sense. So we have, of course, Strowman, Keith Lee, Riddle, Styles, and Sheamus against Owens, Jey Uso, King Corbin, Rollins, and Otis. It was a shutout. It was a shutout. Now, you don't expect, to, I think this happened before, back in the 90s, and I think back in the 2000s, that you've seen Survivor Series squads get blown out. Or that's practically when they're the underdog, or something like that. This was completely high-packaged over most of what we've been getting on Raw that's three hours long. That Team Raw is entirely dysfunctional. They don't even accept, even if he was AJ Styles as, as their captain. And they ended up going five and out. They won they beaten everybody. Rollins took up, uh, uh, did it for the greater good. He bro kicked himself out of the competition. Out of the competition, he allowed Sheamus to bro kick him, and then we had, of course, we had a, I think it was an, I think a spirit bomb over for the finish, over to Jey Uso. We had a phenomenal four out out of surprise when Strowman thought he can uh, clear up the team. And uh, win the match, but a phenomenal forearm caught him by surprise. Riddle eliminated King Corbin. Uh, it's funny because they feuded a while on SmackDown when he first call got called up, so that's interesting on its own part. Other than that, I don't care. So it was a five straight, and we still had some dysfunction into the match, but it didn't really tell much of a story. And the only thing that happened was Jay Uso being shunned by Roman Reigns comes this, come this match on the main event saying he didn't want to deal with losers and you take his brother and go away. Huh. What a joke. And especially when it's smacked down on a different channel like Fox and you guys don't have that many prodigal stars. Thinks most of them went off to Raw. Don't that make your main show that's on a new network, like, in a big one like Fox? Like, that's gonna put you straight up to FS1 territory, and y'all don't want that. And it's not even gonna be a playoff game or something like that. It's gonna be legit because your show sucks. And, uh, seriously, what's the big on SmackDown other than the Mysterio storyline? And, literally... And uh, Roman Reigns acting like a badass whenever he even walks uh, whenever he's even not even wrestling. I'm being serious. I don't know why they don't want to implement storylines to be intertwined on pay-per-view. 
They want to make it, oh, it's be, it's Survivor Series. So that means it's bragging rights. It's Survivor Series. It's bragging rights. It, it really is. And it's not going to make the show better. And especially when Survivor Series came with, like, the uh, Ted DiBiase and IRS and then the, some of the top hills in the company mess with the top baby faces of the company. These guys are just forced to be with each other. They barely even had a time to even establish themselves in their own specific brand. It makes very little sense. They got shut off for no reason. The match wasn't even that good. So, next up, what we had was, of course, the Street Profits and the New Day. That was pretty decent. I saw some kind of cool torture rack into a spinning... Some kind of spinning... So, some corkscrew into a freaking brain buster by Angelo Dawkins. There's some decent spots over involving the New Day and the Street Profits mocking up and yelling over each other. After a surprise finish over the frog splash, and then and after the midnight hour, they kicked out of out of each other's moves, out of, out of their own finishers. So you know this match was about to up the ante. This match is fine, but it would have been better if they just made the Street Profits against the... You know... Her business makes a bit more sense. I understand they were, like, teasing over this match like it was a dream match or some crap. I, I don't really care. The match was fun. I guess that that's it. This is supposed to be a pay-per-view, guys. I mean... You're taking it like you can't do storylines while on Survivor Series. That makes no sense. We had brands earlier in the brand split. Like 2005 was the only thing when we had interbrand matches. And then later on, they just made it like a subplot now. They, they just make it like uh, Rob faces SmackDown. They make that like a minor thing and they make the storylines more important. Like Team Coke versus Team Randy buried a live match involving Vince McMahon and The Undertaker. You can do storylines against. You can still do storylines orienting around the Survivor Series pay per view and still keep it brand versus brand. Make that a minor thing unless you have a major storyline involving. It just makes no sense. And of course, we had, of course, mid card champions Bobby Lashley, U.S. champion, against Sami Zayn, the Intercontinental champion. And yeah, Sami Zayn hating black people. I mean, of course, fighting around the Hurt Business, mocking about we had MVP over the finish, tripping Sami Zayn after Sami Zayn trying to utilize over countouts. Then uh, later on, pulling him back inside the ring. He gets a uh, full Nelson for his troubles. There it is. You have your Continental Champion just looking like a slippery heel midget. And... Yeah, that's technically how Sami Zayn worked to even keep his titles. He used handcuffed in that ladder match involving Styles and Hardy, and he, he had a... He hooked uh, Apollo Cruz's leg on the ring apron when he had to defend it just, just the last night before the pay-per-view. And I just make Sami Zayn look weak, and it just doesn't feel like he's already like in the lower-tier champions. Now he's always feuding with his midgets. Literally. He's feuding with small dudes. Paulo Cruz isn't that impressive. He just like the same 17 moves, but people want to say that he's still like a, tie, a, a top caliber dude for some reason. And then he haven't beaten Daniel Bryan. And yes, Daniel Bryan's more popular. And yes, he's beaten bigger dudes. It's just still a midget. So forget a old match involving Lashley and Zayn. And then we had, of course, the women... Versus women match Sasha Banks against Oscar. It's another decent match. They tr they tried, and we had decent counters over the cross arm breaker backstabber for a near two match. Kevin like uh, we've seen these women wrestle before, so not anything new. You see, that's the, like you, this is the difference. They keep ricocheting around brands because Sasha. And Asuka already wrestled each other for the Raw Women's title before. And, uh, and Sasha won off Countout last time they wrestled each other. Then Asuka beat her clean. Like, this happened in the same year, so them wrestling just doesn't take the authenticity of, you know, why they should wrestle on a major pay-per-view like Survivor Series.
Like the final farewell of the Undertaker is on this night. Are you serious? It just doesn't feel that special. Surprise counter over to the bank statement. Sasha wins. Pretty decent match. Next up we had, of course, Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, Lacey Evans, Peyton Royce, and Lana against ba uh, Team SmackDown of uh, Bailey Natalia. That's been jobbing out on Ra on SmackDown. That Chelsea Green that just came in get already injured her arm, so I think that she was supposed to be part of Team SmackDown. Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, and Ruby Wright. The match was okay in some instances. Until we literally had Bianca Belair that was literally MVP in the team, like lifting everybody counter upon counter. I think there was even a power slam count, uh, counter after somebody tried to run up the apron. Bailey got eliminated the earliest into the show by Peyton Royce, and you know, by a gold dust soul finisher. Natalia hitting up uh, a sharpshooter. On uh, Baszler. Uh, no, I think it was Natalia hitting uh, Peyton Royce over like a sharpshooter. I don't think uh, Lacey Evans had an elimination. It ended up with a double count out with Naomi, uh, I mean, uh, Lace, with uh, Bianca Belair and Nia Jax. Then it ended up with Lana picking up the victory because she was issued not to do much over most of the match and her getting bullied, but her being the sole survivor. Even though nowadays that doesn't mean much. Well, Team Raw wins again. I don't think they even put the scoreboard up. They didn't do the scoreboard like they did last year when they put NXT in for no apparent reason. Other than to make it the third brand. Because uh, uh, NXT has work rate. And we, like 77% of our stars literally have. They wrestled all across the world. Oh my god, I think I'm not doing that much of a good job scouting talent. And, uh, yeah, that's practically the match. There were some notable spots, but not anything to get me hooked. And the bait, an important storyline is, like, Lana's going to succeed if she does nothing. Later on on Raw, yes, this is a late review, so deal with it. This, later on on Raw, she gets issued a women's title match after being issued the sole survivor. Asuka just out of nowhere challenge, challenge, uh, accepts her challenge even though she wasn't even willing to, to, to face her one-on-one -on -one for the belt. Hijinks ensues. That, that's practically it. Next up, we of course had Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre for nothing. It was a brand-to-brand -brand match against the two world champions at the main event. Usually, you have the world... The world champs are going one on one second to last against like Team Raw versus Team SmackDown, but how jobberistic and uh, how uh, like we had no Daniel Bryan, no Shane McMahon. That usually is the highlight of a Survivor Series these days, because uh, of course we have the rundown of highlights made by old people than actual young stars that we try to advertise that are not getting over, and that's not because of the writers. Sometimes because of the writers, but by God, it, they had to get over by their own merit. That's still their own job. And they suck at that. So, yeah, Team Raw and Team SmackDown sucks. So we had the world champions go on last, because hell, at least they're captivating. They look like top stars, and they're freaking, and they're the world champions, so why not? The match was pretty good. Diving off shoulder tackles, we had ongoing trash talk for most of the show. I loved Paul Heyman. Like, I watched him with the kickoff over calling him the placeholder. He's the prop holder. While Roman Reigns is doing the more important stuff, Drew is there doing the contracts, being the... And someday he will be the man. Like, a guy like that that carries himself like that, that makes him look like a million bucks. And plus, he has his own characteristic with the whole fam, like Samoan family thing, and especially the reputation that it has around pro wrestling, and especially the WWE. It makes a whole lot of sense that people have been watching that for a long time. Roman Reigns deserved the W here. 
after the surprise low blow after the ref got taken out. Jey Uso comes with a super kick after getting a low blow. The spear. Uh, there was, of course, many counters. There was also uh, a failed attempt on taking him out over the commentary table. Of course, Nia Jax also failed to take out. Uh, I think uh, I think it was Bianca Belair near the commentary table, and she messed it up. And yet she, she, you know, that injured somebody like three times, injured like two different female workers, and one can't even be in the WWE anymore because uh, she remembers she has a life. Can't, uh, and uh, another chick out of nowhere. These are pre-taped, so kind of messed up. There was, of course, that amazing spine buster he always does. Cool rhythm. These guys had good moves against each other. Future Shock to EDT. The match was really fun to watch. And it was against dudes that had real big dude moves. Kicked each other's ass. And they had defining characters of being a babyface and a heel. Plus, these guys wrestled each other like WrestleMania 35. So, of course, they have experience wrestling each other. So, uh, yeah, that's practically the match. Last, uh, after Jey Uso came assisting Roman Reigns with the W, it was kind of well needed. <clears throat> plus, plus, I think I already know that they're gonna do like Roman Reigns, uh, probably Drew against the Fiend, few uh, in the future, or probably something else involving some of the other guys. Because, uh, uh, unlike SmackDown, that I will ro give Raw credit for, they have intertwining storylines involving the main event scene. So they have The Fiend, Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley with the Hurt Business. So they have a main event faction. The Miz, that's the point of money in the bank briefcase holder. While he could be jobbing out to freaking Angel Garza or something like that. Or Humberto Carrillo, they'll still make him like a threat. Because he's at least a, a talker to at least get himself out of that. Even though I don't like The Miz, he does bring up decent cases for himself. Ugh. They might have him fail. That would be the worst case scenario. Case scenario. <laughs> so we had the farewell. It involves Jeff Hardy, JBL, Big Show, Shane McMahon, Mick Foley, The Godfather, The God Wins, of old tag team from like New Generation, the Attitude Era. Savio Vega, Rikishi, Kevin Nash, Booker T, Shawn Michaels, Rick Flair, Triple H, Kane, and uh, no Vince McMahon. You would think uh, the boss. That, of course, probably had a decent, a pretty good relationship with The Undertaker, would be here to witness his final for Royal with literally one of his biggest draws and the most iconic character in the WWE that was still working for for 30 years. Uh, but it's, it's still nice to see so many guys. He, of course, had his magnum entrance. Of course, uh, even if it was his prime, the entrance would still be slow. We had a hologram era uh, image of Paul Bearer. He was raising, ra uh, putting on his knee with his trademark little throat slash pose. And then he throwed his fist up for the last time. So, that's The Undertaker. I want to thank The Undertaker for so many years, man. Even though, like, I wasn't there, like, the early prime of your career. I think the first Mania match I saw you did was, uh, to be honest, I think, uh, Batista versus you and Edge. And those were my favorites, so I'll keep that always in memory. So, uh, he's one of the greatest characters of all time. I'm always going to keep that at heart. Undertaker, even when he was done with shit, and even the biker thing, he made that look 100% him, because it actually was him. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It, it's tough, even the tough shit he had to do, he always kept himself in character. You gotta respect that, because a lot of char guys right now wouldn't be always on social, uh, would always be social media, even either grow their persona or their brand or what they think they think can get them over. In the business, and uh, the Undertaker always made himself still feel 100%. This is the Undertaker, and I always liked that about the Undertaker.
and most of his history, his uh, streak, all that stuff. So, yeah, it's, it, it's kind of rough to, to hear that you won't get to see The Undertaker at a WrestleMania when it's where even, like, old-school fans, new-school fans, like, heard of The Undertaker before. So, that's a bit rough that you have such a household name, you have such an iconic wrestling piece. And uh, we already have, like, teasers that probably somebody's going to interrupt him if it was probably going to be The Fiend, and it would be nice, but these guys already wrestled, and all because they can probably do cinematic again, and do some cheap shit like this, will go over the factor that this old guy is going to come killing himself, wasting his time, instead of spending time with his family, and what he already did for the business, all because you idiots want another wrestling match. It's kind of dumb. That's my opinion on the matter. Like, I, uh, nobody asked. Nobody asked. That's in my opinion on the matter. I don't want another match from The Undertaker. I think he's already done it enough for the business. So, uh, yeah. That's, that's just my opinion on the matter. Other than that, the most biggest mitt into a pay-per-view after a pretty decent Hell in a Cell. So, oh god, when you feel like giving something like at least a B, you give something at least a C, like, like a C minus. So, I, I think this was a mediocre Survivor Series. And uh, over recent memory, not that impressive because uh, people always uh, dick suck uh, Survivor Series 2016. When the only thing they remember is Shane McMahon getting a concussion. And uh, of course, uh, Goldberg and Brock Lesnar match. That was freaking awesome. So, I don't understand why you guys take it like there were so many amazing recent memories with Survivor Series match. When uh, Drake Mas Maverick pissed himself. So, that's practically all I have here for the pay-per-view review. Of course, we'll go over back on schedule with this Raw review. Even though how piss poor boring it was. But, uh, besides the point. I still gotta give the people what they didn't ask for. That's it for me. Thanks for watching.